part six of rebuilding a very old horizontal steam engine. This is repairing the steam cylinder cover. As you can see, it's broken. So what I'm not going to do is bodge it by trying to braze it or weld it or whatever you do with a thing like this, because at the bottom of it, it's not very well made anyway. So I'm going to make a new one. But as I always try to do sympathetic restorations on these engines, I'm going to make a new cylinder cover, but use a part of the old one, so that it looks identical to the original cylinder cover fitted to the engine. It was up to Blackgate's engineering to buy the parts. I bought a lovely piece of cast iron, and I also bought a piston rod and some bits for the crankshaft. More about that later. The old saying, measure twice and cut once, I always apply, so I'm measuring twice. I'm double-checking just out of curiosity whether the register on the original cylinder cover actually fits the cylinder, which it did. So what I'm going to do, and you can see it here, I've turned a much larger register exactly to the size that fits in the cylinder. You will notice that I've turned this register much deeper on this piece of cast iron, because I'd need to do some machining operations, therefore it needs to be held in the chuck, and I do not want it to jump out of the chuck. The first thing to do is to work on the old part. What I'm going to do is cut this part out. But before I do that, I need to use the original cylinder cover as a jig so that I can drill the holes for the cylinder mounting bolts in the right place. With the piece of cast iron, with its nice large register firmly mounted in the chuck, I'm using a centre drill to drill a hole right in the centre of the work. And once that's been drilled, I will open up this hole with a standard twist drill, which is one imperial size less than I need it to be. For instance, it's a 3 8 hole that I want, so it's the imperial drill size just below 3 8 And then I slow down the lathe, I put it in back gear, and I use a reamer to make a very accurate hole in the work. It's not really good policy just to drill a 3 8 hole straight in the work because it's not going to be a very good finish. By using a reamer, not only is the surface finish very good, it's an accurately sized hole and a quick test with the new piston rod confirms this. So now that I have an accurate 3 8 of an inch hole in the new piece of cast iron, I can use a 3 8 of an inch diameter bolt to bolt the old cylinder cover to the new one. Then it's a simple operation in the drilling machine to transfer the holes from one cover to the other. This is not some kind of sign language, it's just me trying to illustrate the fact that I'm going to cut this piece out and fit it to the new cover. And by the wonders of modern technology, here is the finished item, well almost, there's a bit more to machine off it. This is all that's left of the original cylinder cover. I then mounted this piece on a mandrel to allow me to accurately machine the back of it. And as you can see now, it's a much smaller part. Here's the general arrangement with the gland cover on the top. It's not good engineering practice just to have this bit stuck on the front of the cover. I machined a recess in the cylinder cover, and the old gland housing sits in this recess. I machined the register to the right size to fit in the end of the cylinder. Then I drilled the original stud mounting holes in the casting all the way through, 2BA tapping size, and using a 2BA tap, I cut the thread all the way through the part. Taking great care and making sure I knew which way was up with the mark that I'd made on the casting, I attached the gland housing to the casting with some Loctite 603 that I forgot to video. Once the Loctite 603 had set thoroughly, I then drilled through with the pilot drill, and then on the reverse side of the cylinder cover, I opened up the holes to 3 16 of an inch and countersunk them both to take two short 2BA bolts. These were fixed in place using Loctite 542, which is hydraulic seal, not 603, which would make it impossible to remove them without heating up the part. These 2BA bolts do need to be quite short, they must not protrude too far into the hole because at the other end I'm going to be fitting the studs that hold the gland cover in place. These short 2BA bolts are just enough to hold the gland housing in place and in conjunction with the Loctite 603 this should provide a permanent repair. Now all that remains to be done is to fit the studs on the other side. I'm using a couple of 2BA studs for this. They're not new ones. I don't want them to be because I need this engine to look like it's not been repaired. And when I put the gunmetal part in place, it really does look good. It looks better than it did originally. Time now to make sure the new piston rod is going to fit, and of course it does. And it's a really smooth fit, even without any lubrication. And the good thing, of course, is no one's going to know it's been repaired. Except for maybe you and me. 
Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.